do it. You already know, crooked. I'm with it. <laughs> I just playing, but on a serious note, on a serious note, one thing that kind of struck me in in the, in the um in the podcast that I want to talk to him directly about. You know what I'm saying? Is he said we were mesmerized. He kept using the word mesmerized. Like, oh, they mesmer, I'm saying. I'm back. We kept using the word mesmerized, and I assume, and assumptions, we know that, we know what assumptions are, but I assume that he's talking about Slaughterhouse, because if you follow the storyline, who else could it be? And he was saying that we were mesmerized by M Superstardom, too mesmerized to see the bullshit. We was blinded by our, our, our infatuation for Eminem. Joe, if you don't get the fuck out of here, if that's what you meant, if you don't get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Dude, I took offense a little bit because let me tell you something. If I don't spot the bullshit in this industry right here, then mouths that I feed will go hungry. So to imply, to use a, a huge platform that he has, to imply that I can be mesmerized by somebody to the point where I'm going to sacrifice the food on my table. That's not going down, bro. I got too many mouths to feed. I'm going to always spot the bullshit. I told you I was on death row. You don't think I know what bullshit look like in a record deal? You know what I'm saying? So I kind of took offense, and I'm going to talk to him about that directly. You know what I'm saying? Because I just feel like that word right there was a little disrespectful if it's aimed at Slaughterhouse. We weren't, we weren't mesmerized, you know what I'm saying? And by the way, all that, you know, I was saying this and nobody was saying nothing, that's not true either. Every single thing that we disagreed on as a group, we took votes. If you got outvoted, you got outvoted. You know how many times I stood up? Yo, they had us trying to scoop up some ice cream in New York one time. A meet, meet and greet at an ice cream shop, right? I said, man, I'm not scooping no motherfucking ice cream. That shit is crazy to me. They told me, yo, you wilding. I'm like, dog, what the fuck are we doing at an ice cream shop? Let's hit the streets. Let's push this line. You know what I'm saying? Let's get out there to the people. But that's just one of one of many things. You know, I I I, I wanted Dre to be involved with the project. I asked M, yo. What do you think about getting Dr. Dre involved with the project? I was outvoted. I was outvoted. I didn't jump up and down. I just got outvoted. So when he says that, yo, everybody, you know, I was telling them we shouldn't do this and shouldn't do that. We all were saying certain shit. But if we got outvoted, then it just flew. That was the system. That was the system. And plus, we was trying to grind. Like, this was something brand new. Slaughterhouse on a major. It was a brand new situation. We was trying to grind it out. It might take one, two, three albums to get where we got to go. You know what I'm saying? We just can't get one album in and then say, all right, I'm out of here. You know what I mean? That's not fair to the people who support the brand. I think hip hop really needed us at that time. You know what I mean? But neither here nor there. We just got to grind it out. And that was my position. Let's grind it out. You know what I mean? But. Before I get off of this, let me tell you, let me tell you where we fucked up the most. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you where we fucked up the most. We didn't put the fans first. We didn't put the supporters of the Slaughterhouse brand first. You see what I'm saying? Because if we would have put Slaughterhouse, the, the nation of Slaughterhouse, the fans and the supporters first... We would have figured out a way to give them Glass House. No matter what problems and obstacles. We would have figured out a way to give them Glass House. If we would have put our fans and supporters first. And that's what we fucked up. That was one of the biggest mistakes the group ever made. Ever made. No fans, no us. We should have put the fans first. And we didn't. We dropped the ball, and we got to take responsibility for that. You know what I'm saying?
Because Glass House could have came out. Right now, Kanye threw out an album with seven fucking records on it. You trying to tell me Glass House don't got seven bangers on it? Shit. Well, guess what? If you put it out, now you need the group to commit to promote it. They got to clear their schedule for maybe 60 days to go on a tour, to go on radio and promote it. And if nobody is willing to do that, you're getting nothing. You can't blame the motherfucking label if the group schedules never seem to fit. But now I know why the group schedules don't fit. Because one of the members, my brother Joe, bailed out. He bailed out on the group mentally. He bailed out on the label mentally. He didn't tell us verbally. And that's why the schedules never came together. You see what I'm saying? So look, it is what it is. We had a great time. You know what I mean? I'm happy. He's doing his thing. I just want him to be truthful about shit. But I know he forgets shit. Because when I did the pull-up, I was telling him about scenarios. And he was like, damn, I don't even remember that. Yeah, he forgets a lot of shit. But... I just want be truthful, man. The fans deserve it. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's painting a narrative that me, Royce, and Joel were a bunch of zombies on shady records with no thought process of our own and just following M and Paul blindly like they was making us do whatever they wanted us to do. That ain't how it went down. I can't allow that narrative to live out there. I cannot. I got a reputation out here. I'm a businessman. I've been one for years. I can't allow that. You know what I'm saying? So I have to speak to you guys now and tell you it wasn't like that in no shape or form. Any problems we had, I had a bunch of problems I raised up, but I communicated. I never dipped out. I finally dipped out because it was like, you know what? This situation is never going to happen. We are never going to get to a solution. And that's why I finally bounced out. We not rapping. We not doing nothing. Let's, it's time to wrap it up. You know what I'm saying? But I just want those narratives. Anytime Joe do a podcast and he put out certain narratives that I feel like, yo, that's not really how it went in my my opinion. And, 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 and I don't really like that, you know, being painted as a, as a zombie for shady records. You know what I'm saying? I really don't like it. I'm not... I, I'm technically on Shady Records, right, as Slaughterhouse. But solo, I got my own label. You know what I mean? I got my own people. And 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 I don't get paid from Shady Records. I don't get paid from Shady Records. So I don't have no reason. You don't hear me on M's albums or nothing. M is a solid dude in real life. That's why I fuck with M. Because he's solid in real life. But you don't hear me on that. You don't. What? Why would I be just caping for no reason? I don't have to cape. I don't got to. So my whole thing is, you know, I'm just being real, keeping it a buck. When them narratives come out there, I got to say something. Shady Records invested. They invested money into Welcome to Our House. Everything didn't turn out how we quite wanted it to. Numbers wise So M said let's get back in there This time I'll follow y'all lead even more And y'all go where y'all need to go You feel me Creatively And we did it And Joe had a lot of input On Glass House Because there's a lot of emotional music on there That was Joe's input You see what I'm saying So Shady Not only invested in Welcome to Our House but then they invested again into Glass House. And me, myself, I got paid. Y'all see that plaque when I'm, out, when I'm doing Crook's Corner? You see the Jason Ski Mask plaque? I got paid. I got a check and a plaque. So my whole thing is for Shady, uh, Shady XV. You know what I'm saying? So my whole thing is... And, and and on and on uh, and anything I was involved with with Shady, I got I got paid. I got paid, you know what I'm saying? So my whole thing is that narrative that yo, you know, these guys were just mesmerized or they're not good businessmen. Come on, just stop, Joe. Come on, man. Let's let's just keep that out of the whole thing. And you know, you talk about your experience, I talk about my experience. We good. We good. Shady Records invested money twice. Shady Records paid me. 
M wanted to go back and get it cracking. Right after the Southpaw album dropped, the soundtrack to Southpaw, M got on camera and said, yo, my only focus right now is Slaughterhouse. And he meant that shit. He was like the fifth member. He put in man hours. Y'all might not know this. When you're in the studio, it might take you 12 motherfucking hours to make one three-minute song. And M was in there the whole 12 hours. And whatever his ideas or trying to fix a hook or trying to do... He was in that studio working like he was the fifth member of Slaughterhouse. He deserves his props on that. I don't care if it's a new wave out here that you're going to diss the OGs and you're going to diss M and that's just popular right now. He deserves his fucking respect on that. Just like Joe, you built a media platform for yourself. Can't nobody say nothing about that. You deserve them that credit. You deserve them props. You deserve them accolades. M deserves his props. He deserves his props. We can't be out here allowing people to think that we was four dumb rappers that went and signed over there and all this mayhem was going on and you was the only one who saw what was going on. Nah, bruh. I was in the trenches. I expect mayhem. I expect mayhem when I'm in the trenches. Stay low and keep firing. You know that. You already know that. I expected problems, obstacles. Who cares? We overcome those. We look at it from different points of view and we react to them in a different way and we turn negatives into positives all the time, our whole life, our whole fucking life. You know that, Joe. We can't bail out after one, two things that you don't like. The whole fucking world wanted more Slaughterhouse music and they wanted it from a big platform. Right now, we'd be on some independent shit by now. Slaughterhouse Records had we just turned in those three albums. Had we just stayed in the trenches and said, you know what, M, you're right. Let's go back in and do it. This time, we're going to do it this way. All right, put it out. Oh, shit, that shit worked. All right, cool. Easy. Easy call. Hella easy call. So, you know, I just want to make sure that y'all know some of this shit that y'all hearing may not be 100% accurate. You know what I'm saying? Now, I know people view things from different angles. But if I'm sitting in the room and we trying to get a member of the group on the phone and we cannot, how can we progress? He admitted that he dipped out. He admitted that he didn't tell his brothers. He admitted that. All the way up until I sat on my fucking little fucking yard furniture over here and announced that I was leaving Slaughterhouse everybody in that whole building thought that it was still a Slaughterhouse Slaughterhouse had been done because Joe had been left years I'm talking about I ain't talking about for six months I'm talking about years see what I'm saying but if you get on the phone and you like yo nah I'm still with it but you're not telling us your real problems. I wish he would have just told us and we might have been been a squashed it and you guys might have glass house, but that ain't how it went down. If if was a fifth, the world would be drunk. I stopped drinking. So y'all already know, man. That's just it though. You know what I mean? I want everybody to be peace, be easy, and I ain't got no animosity, you know what I mean? I don't I, I don't do that. I'm in a positive space right now. You know what I mean? I'm living my best life right now. Family business. You know, I got my little brothers with me. We we going for it. You know what I mean? Some of the best rappers on the West Coast right now. I'm living good right now. We in the studio. We having fun. We traveling. We filming it. It's all good. We dropping leaks. We dropping records. Music affects your brain, whether people admit it or not. And you don't have to be weak-minded for it to do so. All I want to do is... Go harder and harder, get smarter than Harvard Go hard with the slaughter to keep it 100 I think the industry wanna see a nigga like me The car that's a martyr, walk in the water The flow is immaculate, reading off the Dead Sea Scrolls As I'm rapping it, the track I'm crashing it Making it look like a Cadillac had a bad accident Cause y'all ain't passionate Catch a jab to your abdomen, then I'ma tap your chin I'ma boss you an applicant Y'all cats pretend, never ever ever rap again Crooked eye, kick it in the hood Pistol to protect me cause I'm figuring it could Homie, I'm living like a genie in a lamp Rub me wrong, I wish a nigga would Killers ready to get dirty, some niggas who dress dirty Who ain't even touch 30, they quiet and ain't wordy They fire and ain't sturdy
I've been a couple of light years from any nigga that wanted to serve me, so God, they cool though. Breaking bad and I'm too go. Got the hue blow hanging out the bulletproof coupe though. If you didn't, now you do know. Yo, light that up, light that up. Middle